This episode is about John Joseph Gotti, born October 27th, 1940. He died June 10th, 2002. He was an American crime boss of the Gambino crime family in New York City. He ordered and helped orchestrate the murder of the Gambino crime boss, Paul Castellano, in December 1985 and took over the family shortly thereafter, becoming boss of what was uh, described as America's most powerful crime family. So sit back, relax, let me tell you the tale on how this thing go. I. All right, you know what it is. Unique Mecca Audio, man. This one here is about John Gotti, man, so y'all understand. I just gave y'all the intro who he is so y'all understand what's going on. So don't say I didn't tell you. Now, if y'all been following it, y'all already know because it's a part of history. Now, I'm going to give y'all something y'all don't know, you know, so that's why you come here to Unique Mecca Audio to find out what's going on. Now, I'm going to take you to Marion. You know what I mean? So we back in Marion. And, you know, everybody chilling. You see the way the tear is behind me? That's called a tear. You know what I mean? Now, all the brothers is locked up on those tears. So what they do is they open up one row at a time. There's three tears. You see, you got cells on the bottom, the middle, and the top. Now, they let out, like, the bottom tier all at once. There's 20 tears on the bottom, and there's 20 tears in the middle, and 20 tears on the top. So they let them all out at once. Now, they only come out for one hour a day. When they come out for the one hour a day, everybody's on their tier. You get to mingle, socialize, and whatever, whatever. There's no guards on the tier. It's just inmates. I'm going to give you all some vicious stories about Marion, you know, for the next few episodes so y'all understand. Now, they open the door and they let them out. Before they let them out, everybody locked in. It was a Sunday. It was a big football game. Get ready to come on. It was a ticket. You got a brother from Philly. That's running a ticket. The brother from Philly is running a ticket. And, you know, being that we locked in the cell, everybody yelled down the tier as far as, you know, y'all, I want to put a bed in. I want to put a bed in. So they call, yo, Philly, I'm trying to put a bed in. I'm trying to put a bed in. So when they put the bed in, they yelled through the tier, yo, give me, you know, New England, you know, over Dallas. You know what I mean? Taking the over and under. And, you know, he down there writing it down or whatever. And, you know, it's on a man time joint. So, you know, when the dude shoot it down there, he put his bets in. And he said, yo, put two books on this, three books on that, or whatever. And then we send what you call is a line. The Spanish people call it a wheeler. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because it's in Spanish. Be like, yo, send the wheeler. So he send the, 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 the wheeler down, which is a line. And in the wheeler, you got you know, the little note or whatever the kite is and the stamps is in it. And that's how we pay our debts under the door because there's nobody to pass it because we all locked in the cell 23 hours a day, just so y'all understand that. Now, John Gotti sat there and he put out a bet. You know what I mean? He, 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 he was getting his bet together and there was another brother that was already on the tier. That means that he got the mic. You know what I mean? So when he got the mic, everybody else keep quiet and let that one person talk. You know, and it's just a respect thing. So you understand where I'm at. So, you know, another brother yelling down there to the Philly dude, and he's telling him straight up, yo, yo, listen, listen, uh, I want, you know, uh, 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 two books on the over and under in the Dallas and New York game or the this game and that game. And you know what I mean? And everybody doing their thing. You know what I mean? But now the game get ready to start. So John Gotti, he yells out, yo, um, I'm trying to put a bet in. I'm trying to put a get bet in. So everybody know his voice, so he ain't got to say who he is. By him yelling that he's trying to put a bet in, um, he expected everybody to be quiet because he's John Gotti. Yeah, he was still arrogant like that. Big shout out to being arrogant because I'm arrogant too. You know? Big shout out. Big shout out to being arrogant. Big shout out to being arrogant. You know? So John Gotti yells out that he's trying to put a bet in. So why he trying to yell that he's trying to put a bet in it's like crazy because dude is already talking, putting it in his bed. But he goes, John Gotti say, nah, I'm trying to put my bed in. <laughs> you know what I mean? So the brother's down there taking another man's bet, the Philly brother taking another man's bet, but John Gotti decides he wants to put his bed in, so he feels like he's the Teflon Don, but he don't realize you're in prison with other Dons, and they all Teflon. You're not the only Teflon God, Don Gotti. 
I get that right. Now, when he does that, the brother's like, yo, I'm putting my bed in. And God is like, man, I don't care what you're doing. I want to put my bed in because the game getting ready to start and I don't want to miss my bed. And dude said, yo, but I was talking before you, meaning I had the microphone before you. And Gotti said, man, come on with that bull crap. You know who I am? I'm John Gotti. You know what I mean? I do what I want to do, <laughs> you know? And dude is like, yeah, well, you know who I am. I'm from Detroit. I'm a gangster too, <laughs> you know? And Gotti's like, man, I'm not trying to hear that. So they're getting a little verbal thing between the bars and they're going back and forth. So now while they're going back and forth, they go ahead, they put the bed in, everybody make their bed on time. You know what I mean? Now, let me tell you a little something about how Marion worked. Marion, they had a racist ass captain. If y'all want to hear the stories about this racist captain in Marion, how it went down, meaning he'll sit there and he'll know that a black is beefing with a AB, you know, meaning Aryan Brotherhood, and he'll put the black and the Aryan Brotherhood in the cell. They had cameras in the cell even back then, and they'll record the fight and the stabbing just so that they can look back at it and see who won, how it went down, and you know, that's how the guards had their entertainment. Big shout out to the guards having their entertainment. <laughs> calm down, y'all. Calm down, calm down. That's how they had their entertainment, just so y'all understand. Like I said, cash app on the screen, man. You know what it is. A dollar, five dollars, whatever. You getting game, you don't get nowhere else. Where else you gonna hear about John Gotti and the details what happened in Marion? You understand what I'm saying? Where else are you gonna hear about the details of John Gotti and Marion other than Unique Maker Audio. So tell a friend to tell a friend, and don't forget the cash app is on the screen because the game is to be sold, not told, and I'm giving y'all a lot of game, so respect the hustle. Like Pretty Gangster said, $10 ain't going to hurt nobody. Now, you like this, you donate your little $10. Now, let me finish. So John Gotti's sitting there, and they're going back and forth through the bars. So while they're going back and forth through the bars, John Gotti's like, man, I'm John Gotti. I ain't got to wait on nobody. You know who I am. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm American crime boss. I done did this, did that. You know what? I ain't got to go no further. Take my bet. Forget who else is talking. I'm John Gotti. You know, that's how he talk. Just so you understand. You think I'm arrogant. When you get money, you get that arrogance. John Gotti said, man, take my bet. I don't care what you doing. Take my bet. And dude is like, nah, I'm taking this other dude bet. And John Gotti's like, nah, da da da. You know? So now the DC dude, the DC dude get involved. No, DC gotta be involved because DC keep the peace. You know what I mean? They make sure things run right. So a DC brother was the orderly. The DC brother tell him, yo, slow down. You know, he gonna get your bet. And he's like, man, I don't care what you're saying, monkey. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, John Gotti was racist like that. I'm giving it 100. We give you the uncut here. Just like I told you how I saw Michael Jackson's free basin in, in Studio 54 on Vlad TV. Go check the Vlad interview out. And everybody went in the uproar. You know what I mean? I was in the trenches, man. So what I say is facts. Challenge my facts. Anybody out there with my prison stories, my hood stories, whatever. I'm welcoming you to challenge my facts. Period. Now, John Gotti was racist. Bottom line, you understand? We all love John Gotti because he went up against the government. He the Teflon Don and he let him know what time it is. So we love John Gotti regardless of his racism. Because I'm going to tell you something else. I was in, I'm going to get back to the story. You know I like to ride. Y'all sit back and ride with me, man. Sit back and ride with me and enter my mind and my journey. That ain't asking for too much. I Right or wrong? Because we had to make a what? Make, make an audio. audio. Now, John Gotti sat there. He racist as crap. We're going to put it that way. We don't mind him being racist because in a way we all racist. Being racist, so you understand, to give you an example, when I said we all racist, being racist, you know what I mean? And don't use just the word racism to, to, to form it. Meaning we're all, let me change that, we're all prideful. You know what I mean? Just like I met, I had a celly. That was from Kissimmee, Florida. And the man tried to actually tell me that Kissimmee had more people than New York City. Kissimmee, Florida, not the state of Florida, but Kissimmee, Florida had more people than the state of New York City. And Kissimmee go harder than New York City. Do y'all hear this crap? I had to actually listen to a man saying that Kissimmee had more people in New York and go harder than New York. No disrespect to Kissimmee, but you're this big. You know what I mean? And New York is this big. 
stop the crap. But, you know, these are the type of things that go on. We all prideful. That's why I said, like, we all racist, meaning we all prideful for where we're from. John Gotti was prideful for the Italians. You know, we prideful for our little neighborhoods because we haven't been outside of our neighborhoods. You know what I mean? So Detroit would say, you know, they're tougher than New York. Detroit would say they're tougher than Chicago. Detroit would say they're tougher than Miami. And, you know, they have a right to feel that way. They're entitled to feel that way. The same way John Gotti is entitled to feel that the Italians is a super race. And that's another thing. You know, like I said, I ride, man. I ride. So y'all sit back and enjoy this ride. Just like when I was in ADX Supermax, you know, I met a brother uh, from California named uh, uh, Vern. You know what I mean? You, 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 you white dudes, you know, and I say white dudes, don't worry about if I say white dudes, white boys, it's not a disrespect. That's just how we talk in prison. Because they even had a, a group called the Dirty White Boys. The Dirty White Boys. Let's get that straight. They called themselves boys. Like we say the Florida boys, the Miami boys, the Atlanta boys. You understand what I'm saying? We use that, but it's not in a negative derogatory term. So don't look at it when I say white boys because my skin, like I taught y'all before, I haven't gave y'all in a minute. When you tap the back of your hand, when you can't talk through the joint, you be like, yo, who got into that fight? They be like, that mean a black person because that's the darkest side of your hand. You know what I mean? Who won? They tap the inside of their palm, which is lighter than the backside of their palm, which means the, you know, white boys. You understand what I'm saying? So you understand. We had a dirty white boy, you know what I mean? But this dude wasn't a dirty white boy. Let's get that right. You know, uh, he was an AB. We had Vern that was in ADX with his official gangster. Let me tell you about Vern. Because like I said, I like to ride. I know this about John Gotti. Don't go get impatient and don't tell me how to run my joint. Just subscribe to my YouTube. You know what I mean? The cash app is on the screen. Pay for the game. That's what it's about. I went on a couple of dudes' YouTube channel the other day that I like some other prison YouTube channels, and I paid for the game. No disrespect to them, because I'm saying I'm gonna give you. I mean, I'm gonna give them a shout out. You know what I mean? I'm gonna give a few. You know, a uh, prison story channel my shout out. We got my man Saint Laz. Big shout out to Saint Laz. Then we also got uh, Bill Feezy. Big shout out to Bill Feezy. Then we also got Banky Pound. Big shout out to Banky Pound. You understand? Give him a round of applause. Give him a round of applause. You know what I mean? Give him a round of applause. That's what I'm saying. I'm a, I'm a real gangster. I'm from the era where we all help each other. Just like I'm going to plug my man joint. Make sure you get the Felon Magazine with Lou Sims on the cover. Get the Felon Magazine with Lou Sims on the cover. That's the homie. You understand what I'm saying? Cop the magazine, the felon magazine. If you don't know where to get it, you could DM me and I'll tell you where to get it. Lou gives his story up. But that's how we look out for each other. I did a video the other day where I was at a joint and I had my felon magazine with me. So let me just show you how stupid these YouTubers is. How stupid these YouTubers is. I'm in the video and Lou is my brother. Just like Gangster Lou. Big shout out to Gangster Lou. <laughs> Let's give my man Gangsta Lou a round of applause. Let's give my man Gangsta Lou. Now, you know, these is my brothers. You know what I mean? They had a joint, and we was at Legends Lounge. Now, we're at Legends Lounge, and I'm holding the magazine up. You know what I mean? It's my man, man. He on the cover. I want them to go support and buy the magazine. So I'm holding the magazine up. Make sure y'all copy your fellow magazine, man. I'm holding the magazine up, and some stupid-ass... What do you call them? Viewers? What, I don't know what the hell they call them. Followers. They call them on Instagram. Some stupid ass follower, a female, no disrespect to the female, but a female says, oh, I can't believe you holding up a magazine. That's my brother. I want him to sell his magazine, make money, and move forward like I'm trying to make money on YouTube and whatever other ventures I'm doing. Cop the book of Row in Harlem. Hold on, I don't even know where to point at. It's right over here. Ah, uh, right here. Cop the book of Roaring Harlem at aroaringharlem.com. We promote each other, man. You understand? We promote each other. And that's what it's about. But back to where we was at. We pride for people. Everybody's prideful. We prideful of our, of our neighborhoods because we haven't been outside our neighborhoods. 
We profit of our cities because we haven't been outside our cities, or we just represent our cities even though we've been outside. You understand what I'm saying? Me, I went to school out in Jersey. I came from Jamaica, you know what I mean? Landed in Brooklyn, then went to Jersey, then went to the Bronx, you know what I mean? Then I uh, went back to Jersey, went to Brooklyn, you know what I mean? Then went to Harlem, then went to Washington Heights, did my thing. You understand? Me a Jamaican. Let's get that right. You understand? But like Rakim said, it ain't where you from, it's where you at. I'm going to get back to John Gotti. Sit back and enjoy my ride, man. Please. I Now, back to John Gotti. So now we in the joint and they putting in the bet, you know? So they putting in the bet and John Gotti felt like he's John Gotti, you know? He, he, he's Italian. He's a superior race. When he speaks, everybody's supposed to shut the F up. You understand what I'm saying? So dude is like, nah, we do this in all of my brother because we all prideful people and we all in charge of what we doing. So no, you got to wait your turn. So John Gotti said, man, get out of here, you monkey. Because he racist like that. You understand? But we know that, that, that you know, he's prideful. Y'all call it racism, we call it pride. Just like you got, uh, what they call them boys, uh, man, what they call them boys that rode with Donald Trump. You know what I mean? The pride boys. You understand? They just prideful of their, you know, of their white ethnicity. I might have said the word wrong. So y'all correct me because YouTube love to do that. Get a troll something to do. But you got the proud boys. The proud boys feel like the white race is a superior race and all these minorities coming in from Jamaica, Mexico, Guatemala, uh, Haiti, Cuba, and every god dog on where else, Africa, and they taking over and they getting the jobs that they supposed to have. But mind you, how many white people how many white people is going to go pick oranges in Southern California or down in Miami Beach, as we say, down bottom? Ain't none. So you get the, you, you get the foreigners to come in, as y'all call them, and they take these jobs that y'all don't want to take, but then you get mad because they take the jobs you don't want to take. They make a living, take care of their family, and move forward in life while you're sitting here saying, I'm not going to pick orange on no god doggone body trees. That's for monkeys. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? I mean, follow me, man. This is where it's at, man. I mean, I, you know, I just want you to enter my mind to see where I'm at. So John Gotti sits there and he says, man, I'm talking. I'm giving my bet. The game get ready, game get ready to start. Y'all need to take my bet. Dude said, nah, it don't work that way. So the next day when they open up the tear, being that he done called the DC brother a monkey. Now, mind you, the, the, the dude that ran the ticket when we uh, 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 in Marion was a dude from Philly. You understand? Philly got a lot of Muslims. We all in the Midwest, so we all stick together as far as, you know, blacks go together. Show you how this thing works. So you youngins, don't go to prison because I'm giving you the politics. Don't say unique make oil didn't give you the politics. From this day forward, can't no young person use that lame-ass excuse that they didn't know. Because now you know. So y'all need to share this video with all the youngins that's out there gangbanging, saying they got ops and they don't care about going to prison so they know what go on in the prison. Now, it's going to turn into a vicious twist. I don't know how long this video going to be, but I'm giving you all the game. Now, so here goes John Gotti talking crap, called the D.C. dude a monkey. It's a Philly dude running the ticket, but D.C. and Philly run together because they on the thing. Now, the D.C. dude wasn't on D.C. time. When I say wasn't on D.C. time, meaning you could be from New York, you could be from Jersey, you could be from Baltimore, you could be from Philly, you could be from D.C., you could be from Richmond, you could be from Atlanta, you could be from Timbuktu, but if you're a Muslim, you're a Muslim time and you follow the Sunnah. You understand? But at the same time, big shout out to Al Ra, we on man time. You understand? Cop your man time hats at Unique Mecca Audio, I mean over at AuroraInHarlem.com. But make sure you follow my man, Al Ra. He got a vicious clothing line. Support our black clothes, you know, uh, designers that's trying to make it. Don't just let our history go out being Dapper Dan is the only designer because he ran during the crack era. We got brothers in 2023 like Al Ra, um, OG Society, you know what I mean, out of North Carolina that's trying to start a clothing line, buy and support black. Let me get back to my story. Follow me. Now, you see what I make sure everybody eat? Because that's how we do back in the day in all the major cities, not just Harlem. And when I say Harlem, you know, I'm talking about New York in general. 
Talking about Bronx, Brooklyn, Queens, everybody. We all won. But I just say Harlem because that's where I laid my thing down. You understand? But I know good brothers from Queens. We got Big C. We got the Supreme Team. We got the Twins. We got Bimmy. You understand what I'm saying? We got my man Tony Montana. You understand? We got all day. We got my man True God. You understand? We got brothers from Queens. We got Dean Nice in Brooklyn. You know, we got Jimmy Fingers from the Poison Clan. You understand what I'm saying? We got Chinaman from the Shower Posse. And of course, we got my man Delroy Uzi, who I'm going to do more of. So pay attention to these names that I mentioned, because I was in the loop and I ran the streets. Challenge what you want to challenge about Unique Mecca Audio, and you're going to look stupid. You understand what I'm saying? Because the people are still alive to verify what I'm saying. Back to Marion. Take this ride with me. Now, Philly dude running a ticket to catch y'all up, being that I done went off with my little promo of my homie, you know, Lou Sims and, you know, Gangster Lou and, you know what I mean, and everybody that's doing their thing. And big shout out to the homie Ferris, you know what I mean? Lynch mob, you know, for life. You know what I mean? Even though he changed his life around. Now, so you understand where we at. A Philly dude run the ticket, the Philly dude on Muslim time, DC dude on Muslim time, John Gotti tried to scream on the Philly dude. Philly dude said, nah, you know what I mean? Check yourself, pay your position, wait your turn. John Gotti said, I'm John Gotti. When I speak, you listen, period. You understand what I'm saying? Pay attention. So now, you know, the next day they open the doors up. So when they open the doors up, ain't a whole lot of talking. White man done called a black man a monkey. I don't care if you're Italian, German, Greek, uh, Russian, or whatever. You done called a black man a monkey. So now you got to pay. So when they opened the doors up the next day, even though he had the argument with the Philly dude, he called the D.C. dude, who's on Muslim time, a monkey. So the D.C. dude came out and smacked fire from John Gotti. You know what I mean? Challenge what I'm saying. He smacked fire from John Gotti. But I'm going to give John Gotti his props. Give him his props. <laughs> you know, give him his props. Calm down, y'all. Calm down. Now, let me get back to where I'm at. Gunshots. Gunshots. Got to give three gunshots. John Gotti fought back as a man. As a man on man time. Check my man Al Raw. As, my, as a man on man time, John Gotti fought that D.C. Muslim back, and they went at it. But dude was big, cocky, strong, working out all day. He beat fire from John Gotti. No disrespect to John Gotti, because we all win and we all lose. Like I said, I keep it 100. I got, boop, busted in the face with a lock. Go back and check that video. Had my, my nose separated from my lip. I had to go to the outside hospital to get my nose sewed back to my lip because dude bust me in my face because I violated prison rules. Big shout out to the dude that bust me in the face with the lock. <laughs> Big shout out. Big shout out. Y'all you know I mean, calm down, y'all. Big shout out. But that's how real I keep it. I can let you know when I take a loss. So all y'all want to get in your feelings, not disrespecting John Gotti. Just like I took a loss, had my nose separated from my lip. I had to go out to the outside hospital, get my joints stitched back in. And now when I sweat, you can see the sweat building up at the bottom of my nose between my lip from where dude busts me in my joint. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm just keeping it 100. If y'all can't, uh, uh, I mean, screw you if you can't understand the facts. That means you ain't really from the street. But the people that subscribe to me, they from the street and they want to learn about the street, even they not from the street. But John Gotti jumped out there, got the crap beat out of him. Do beat blood from him. You know what I mean? After they was done, John Gotti got up and shook his hand as a man and told him in his face, you got that. You know what I mean? But still, screw you. And you're going to have to whoop me every day because I'm still going to look at you as a monkey and all of that. So they went back to fight again. <laughs> you know what I mean? And John Gotti, when they was done, he got up again and shook his hand because this was on man time. That's how men do. We in the prison. They ain't pull no knives out. You know what I mean? Which it got to that. But we gonna get to that. So they get to fighting in the joint. John Gotti tells the man, you have to whoop me every day. You know what I mean? Because there's no way in hell you think you're going to sit here and, and whoop me and get away with it. So they shook hands, and that was the end of that. But that's how that played out. So you understand how we do it in prison on man time. You understand? So now John Gotti sitting in, and after he whooped him, being that John Gotti, so you understand how it was moving. You see this tear? 
So imagine 24 people on that bottom tier, 24 in the middle and 24 on the top. John Gotti used to buy, because, you know, we, we eat by the tiers. John Gotti used to go to the commissary and he'll pay, you know, he, 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 he sent a commissary list down to everybody. You understand? And big shout out to my man Juan Ramon Mata from Honduras. Big shout out to Honduras. Big shout out to Honduras. All right, all right, all right. relax, y'all, relax. Relax. Now, let me get back to where I'm at. My man from Honduras, I'm gonna get back to John Gotti, but let me ride. Let me ride. I just want y'all to experience different things, different places. Now I'm in ADX. I'm in ADX with Juan Ramon Monta. As soon as I get there, first day I get there, the brother, uh, I say brother because, you know, he's a convict. You know what I mean? It don't matter what color you are. I call your brother if you're a convict. I don't care if you're white, green, purple, Martian, Russian, or whatever. Now, the brother sent me down a commissary list, and he said, I know you don't have your property yet, you know what I mean, in the kite, order what you need. You understand? So when he said, order what you need, I looked at it, and I'm like, oh, man. So I, I found out I, I needed some cookies, I needed some chips, I needed some Skittles, I needed some Zoom Zooms and Wham Whams, and I ordered all this stuff. But then my man that was next door to me that was passing the wheeler, which is the kite, he said, yo, you fill out that list yet for um for uh, Mata? That's what we call him, Mata, Honduras. Mata, so you understand. And I'm going to give you some stories about him, too. If y'all want the stories about Juan Ramon Mata, y'all like these prison stories and y'all like these gangster stories and these cracker stories and these drug lord stories, Google Juan Ramon Mata. Juan Ramon Mata, a.k.a. El Negro. They call him El Negro because he was, you know, a, 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 a Latin complexion, but it was darker. You know what I mean? He wasn't black, wasn't nowhere near black, but they call him El Negro because he was close to a nigga. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? That's why Ramon Monte. But y'all Google him, and if y'all want to hear some stories about him, I got some stories about him. Anybody who was anybody I was with because I am somebody. Let's get that straight. I don't care about the government taking everything I got from me. Let me give y'all this one. The other day I was hanging out with one of um, my female friends and I got a phone call from my man, OG Daniel. OG Daniel said, man, I saw that video you did on the Connect. Man, you know, that video was fire. You know what I mean? And he told me how, man, I didn't know all that was going on with you. Da, 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 da. You know, I kept mine under the wrap, but I don't come out bragging about what I did, who I was, and that, because that, that's who I was. But who I am today as a man is a man trying to save the youth and giving you these stories to keep you from going to jail. And that's why I'm sharing this, you know what I mean? This John Gotti story with you right here. You understand what I'm saying? So let, 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 let's get that right. So now, OG Daniel said to me, you know, he said, man, me and my wife just got one question, man. You know what I mean? Show you how funny we is with each other. We don't take nothing personal. He said, man, all the millions you had, what do you got now? You know what I mean? And you know what I told him? He said, man, I got my freedom. I got happiness. And I got my 88-year-old mother. My mother's 88, and I get to be here to take care of her until, you know, God decide to call her. So my freedom is worth way more than the millions that I had. So you youngins, listen to this. No matter how much money you get, when you go to jail, you can't spend but $290 a month on your commissary. If you want to spend $290 a month, you got to either send money to somebody else's books or do like John Gotti and Juan Ramon Mata did and just buy the whole tier of money just to spend up the money so your family ain't out there screwing off your money doing what they want to do. So that's what this is about. So that's what's going to happen to your money. All that money you make, you go to jail, your family going to spend it. Your wife going to spend it, whatever. I got some love and dog stories I'm getting ready to give y'all too that's going to blow your mind. You know what I mean? Because I had to tap back into, you know, man, 26 years in prison, I got all of it. But let me get back to John Gotti. So now they get there, they, 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 they fought. John Gotti told me you have to whoop me every day. And they all respected John Gotti after that. But what happened after that, right? What happened after that? The... The, 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 uh, the Mexican Mafia and the Aryan Brotherhood stood behind John Gotti. You understand what I'm saying? He said, nah, you know, you got into it, the nigga, so we holding you down. Yeah, I said, nigga, because it's unique mecha audio. I'm just telling you how we talking. There ain't no disrespect. He said, yo, you got into it, the niggas, so we going to hold you down. That was the Mexican Mafia, you know what I mean, and the Aryan Brotherhood 
and, you know, the Texas, you know, mafia, the Texas, you know, gang battles, you know, because they all feel like they white, you know what I mean? No disrespect to them, but they side with the white people, and then we got the blacks. So we had the, the D.C. and Philly, they got together, and now it turned into a big old brawl. If you want to hear about that brawl, let me know on the next, let, let me know in the comments if you want to hear about the brawl, man. I've been on here exactly 30 minutes with my intro, it's going to be about 35 minutes, you know, with my outro. So if you want to hear the rest of that, let me know. But John Gotti, rest in peace. You did your thing, my brother. You did your thing. And I did, I, 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 I did this because he was a Baptist, <laughs> you know what I mean? So that's why I'm respecting his you understand what I'm saying? Home go law to the uh, uh, Muslims. But I'm just letting you know, rest in peace to John Gotti. He went out on man time. He had an issue with a brother. He stood toe-to-toe. -to -toe. He fought the brother. He said what he said. He violated the prison code. He know he violated the prison code, and he accepted the ass whooping. But he told him straight up, we're going to have to fight forever, man. You ain't going to sit here. Every day, you're going to have to whoop me. Now I want you all to sit there, and I want you all to check out you know, my outro, because my outro got me and all my people celebrating, you know, the holidays, uh, New Year's and Christmas. You see how my people look, you get to see me in a uh, in, in, in a little tuxedo and all that, you know, to see you know, how unique make an audio chill. All right. Cheers. Cheers. Toast the crime. Toast the crime. Toast the crime. What? Make an audio. What? Fresh out the can of 26, yeah. he back on the strip, uh -huh. getting back in the mix. Yeah. What he mentions a gift. Trust. You stand up ten toes down, and I suggest you pay attention to this. Real. Take a little gully, posse, and put it in hall. Uh -huh. He cut from the bottom, back. came up from the bottom. Back. Drop the book, you should go and get it. Go the Instagram it. page and the YouTube, you could go and visit. Yeah. Then you could consider yourself LinkedIn. Real. Sit front row and get juice from a kingpin. Uh -huh. How he went through it, so you ain't gotta go do it. Uh -huh. Did not pay attention would be stupid. It's talking about the man that probably put your grandfather on probably the reason that him and your grams got along a man that generated millions on the block did his time never squill until the cops make an audio Get it live like two G's in the night. Yeah. Drop top beamer so shine. Yeah. I let shorty go, she was wine. Treat her like my past, she behind me. Spin a couple bands on the dapper dan. You be back again, getting green like a Packers fan. No cap, it's a roaring uptown. They be horn uptown, Dominican bust down. Now we on the positive. You we got a lot to give. Now you trying to stop the kids from being an operative. So take heed, homie, lend the air. He started in uptown, he gon' finish dead. But now it ain't about selling drugs, buying cars. It's about buying property to make the community yard. So we can give back to the youth them. Cause they the truth them. And bless up to all the rude men. Yeah.